The Texas trio is back. My word earlier was shenanigan because of the accusations of fuzzy math that this voucher debate is bringing. Stephen Chairman Martinez Fisher said an education voucher program is like someone wanting to tax opt out for things like parks and roads. Do your legislative contacts buy that comparison? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, and I say that because technically the parent isn't opting out. They're still paying taxes and they're still paying for education. It's just in a different field. Now I'm a product of private school education, kindergarten through 12th grade in the state of Georgia. But this is really going to come down to, um, I mentioned pre preferences because it's should tax dollars be used for this. Now other states do this, but the big question is, is Texas going to fall in line with what dozens of other states have done? Another concern has been accountability. We touched on that during that governor's interview of some educators saying that they can't be held, private schools can't be held to the same standards. So opt out, I think, is a stretch. Greg, the state Senate in 2017 passed an education savings account bill, but it died in the House. The chairman now essentially said, provide more education funding, then maybe we can talk. Is that mixed messaging? Is that a trap? Rudy, call me cynical, but it appears Chairman Martinez Fisher is counting on folks having a very short memory. As in 2019, when the legislature increased public ed spending at least six billion, as in 2021, when lawmakers again increased the public ed budget substantially. And most importantly, the chairman made absolutely no mention of billions of federal COVID catch up dollars, which flowed directly through the state to local districts to be spent or saved at their discretion. I also didn't hear anything about the benefit public schools receive from the sky high property tax appraisals we've all experienced in this state or the billions in reserve funds collectively socked away by ISDs. Make no mistake, this is an old fashioned turf war over money and rightly or wrongly, Democrats are playing the impoverished public school sympathy card. Stephen, more than two dozen states allow some type of public education money transfer and there are others like Texas proposing to do it now. Does the big budget surplus in Texas provide an opportunity for some legislative give and take? That can be a selling point for some lawmakers, but then on the other side of the coin, someone can say, well, we can't guarantee that that budget surplus will continue to be around. Now, there was an unexpected surplus due to inflation, and as Greg mentioned, some school districts talking about education funding, some of those same educators and superintendents are saying that the while money has increased for public education, it's not taking into account inflation. Now, that's a different conversation for another day, but I don't think the surplus will be a good selling point for lawmakers because that surplus may not always be there. It's a huge surplus, but of course, there are other agencies and topics and things that people are pushing for that wants a piece of that pie as well. Greg, uh, with that said, it seems to me passage in the House may hinge on another big word, accountability. Stephen mentioned that just a moment ago and how that's written into the legislation. You agree with that? I do agree. Accountability will be an issue, but I think Abbott and Patrick are going to have to sell critical rural lawmakers on the concept of tax dollars following the child and not the other way around. A big Republican theme is empowering parents. What could be more empowering than giving parents the resources to educate their kids how and where they want? Will a freewheeling system have some abuses? I think the answer is yes. However, Texas public schools have plenty of so-called accountability measures, and collectively their performance has been mediocre at best for decades. Stephen, uh, we had somewhat of a case of a powering down the state school board a few weeks ago, voting to remove its opposition to vouchers without endorsing the idea. That's a big signal to state lawmakers. Are you seeing any signs rural lawmakers are going to go in line with that, go in line with the governor? Well, look at it. Governor Abbott has been on the road. You would think he's running for re-election. He just won re-election. He's making a road trip going to rural communities. He came to Corsicana, Texas. He's going to other rural communities making his pitch. Those rural locations have all been private Christian schools is something that to look out for, but he's making his campaign. I think it's going to take some time for us to really flesh out and see if it's going to stick with rural Republican lawmakers. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this one up to see this interview or any of our other past interviews. Go to our station's YouTube page and continue the conversation with us on social media.
Next week on Texas, the issue is we look at a bipartisan issue. I talked to Dallas State Representative Rafael Anchia about a proposal to tighten the penalty for violators who have ankle monitors. And it's a bipartisan issue that has support in the Senate from a Republican in Houston. We'll have that next week when you join us on Texas, the issue is and remember to let us know what you think the issue is.